Protest rocked the Wisconsin city of Kenosha following the police-involved shooting of Jacob Blake. Blake's shooting, captured on cell phone video, appears to show officers following Blake to his car, then shooting him while his back is turned. Outrage over the shooting fuels night after night of unrest. Protesters and counter-protesters clash. This night ends with two dead and one injured. In the melee is 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse. The Illinois resident crossed state lines on August 25th, telling local media he was there to protect property. By daybreak, he was a wanted person. Video captured with a cell phone appears to show Rittenhouse running through the street as others race toward him. Some accuse him of being a shooter, then there are shots. People are getting shot all around us. People are just getting shot everywhere, guys. Video from a different angle of the confrontation shows the gunman firing multiple rounds as a crowd surrounds him. The gunman moves away, walking with his hands raised in what seems to be a surrender as police roll by. Ah! Rittenhouse makes his way home while police try to make sense of what happened. The radio traffic was nonstop and there were people running all over the place. Shot to death is 26-year-old Joseph Rosenbaum in a parking lot. Moments later, in a second clash that was caught on camera, Anthony Hubert is killed and Gage Grosskreutz is injured. Rittenhouse is charged with several felonies, including two counts of intentional homicide, attempted homicide, and possessing a deadly weapon while under 18. The gun charge in particular has been the source of heated exchanges between prosecutors and the defense. As to 29593, that has to do with hunter certification. If an individual is out hunting, and that's what Mr. Binger was hanging his head on, there is no allegation anywhere that my client was hunting on August 25th. There's no dispute in this case that Kyle Rittenhouse armed himself with an AR-15 on August 25th, 2020, at the age of 17 years old. But that's it. It's that simple. Now, if the defense wants to hide behind hunter safety regulations to try and excuse that behavior, then I'll simply quote back what attorney Richards just said, which is the defendant wasn't hunting. Big hearing tomorrow in the case. And as you may recall, this is a self-defense case. Kyle Rittenhouse is not going to say he did not shoot three people and kill two of them. They're going to say it was all done in self-defense. And part of that self-defense they want to call a use of force expert. The defense does. Kyle Rittenhouse and his attorneys want to put an expert on to talk about use of force. Well, the prosecution is objecting to it, and that's what tomorrow's hearing is all about. Here's what the prosecution is saying. Uh, the jury simply does not need an expert to tell them what a reasonable person would do. This is not a complicated matter. John R. Black's expertise on the use of force by law enforcement is not relevant to this case. John Black's report contains his opinion of the defendant's action, which is based on the same information that will be provided to the jury. There is no basis to conclude that his opinion on these issues is any more helpful or valid than the jury's will be. Mr. Black's opinions are not based on scientific, technical, or specialized knowledge. Mr. Black's report is based entirely on secondhand information. He was not present in Kenosha on August 25, 2020, and has not spoken with the defendant. He has simply watched the same videos that the jury will be shown and read the same reports and statement, statements that will come into evidence. He is of no better position than the jury to evaluate the defendant's actions. Okay, so prosecutors don't want a use of force expert on the witness stand in this case. Let me bring back in the uh, think tank and, and get some legal expertise from you all. Uh, Michael Bixon. Um, no, I'll go to Casea first. Casea, um, a lot of folks watched the, the trial of Derek Chauvin, the man who murdered George Floyd. Use of expert uh, witnesses testified in that case for both sides. Why would they not be proper for this case involving Kyle Rittenhouse? because use of force is typically with law enforcement officers. Kyle Rittenhouse is not a law enforcement officer. He does not have the training nor the experience. So therefore, I mean, it, you do not need an expert to uh, break down or testify as to whether or not his force was necessary. 
This is not a case of whether or not an officer utilized excessive force based on his training and experience. And, you know, if I was a prosecution and the judge allows this use of force to come in and this expert testimony, then I would utilize what everyone is saying he was doing, which was hunting. But in this case, we know he was not hunting animals. He was hunting humans because his use of force and his show of force is when he was utilizing that AR-15 as power. Michael Bixon, have you ever used a use of force expert in a self-defense case versus a, a, a police case? I have not, although in all honesty, I think it's a very interesting perspective. I mean, typically, officers are held to an even higher standard. So if you have a use of force expert who actually comes in and says that, yeah, he went along those guidelines or that he complied with them, and I'm assuming that he's going to testify in their favor, then I think that could really help them out. I mean, you're talking, again, about police officers with training who are held to these higher standards, and they're going to come in and say that Rittenhouse was acting under those standards. I think it's really going to be a good thing for the defense. Jennifer Brandt, do you think the jury needs help in figuring out whether or not this was self-defense? I think that they do. And I think the use of force expert is a, probably a really good idea for the defense because it gives some credibility to Rittenhouse's actions. They, they're going to say that it was appropriate what he did. He, he, he knew sort of the standards and he was defending himself, that he had no other choice but to use his gun. And, you know, he was allowed to walk around carrying a gun. That's the, that's the legal standard in Wisconsin. So he was, he was permitted to have the gun and he you know, what the expert will probably say is that he did not, you know, use it in an inappropriate way. And I think that will help the jury. That sort of will make the jury think, well, this wasn't somebody who just was out hunting. This is somebody who was actually being pursued and, you know, used the gun to protect himself. Casey, so I think it's a pretty good idea. Casey, how important do you think this ruling by the judge will be? Because tomorrow is the day where the judge is going to hear arguments on this issue and the trial is just around the corner. It's very important. And if the judge rules with the defense and allows its use of force expert, I'm pretty sure, or in this case, a prosecution better have it, its rebuttal expert to testify that uh, this was excessive use of force for a civilian to utilize. And, and let's not get me mistaken with my statement that although it is legal, absolutely legal to carry uh, this weapon, it, it is the prosecution's position that he utilized this weapon to intimidate, to fear, and then cause uh, the, this murder to happen. All right. Um, again, folks, this trial is coming up tomorrow. A big, big hearing here on your front row seat to justice. We've got a, um, that's the motion hearing, October 5th. Trial date, November 1st. This is less than a month away. What a trial. The most divisive of all the cases I've covered in my years here at Court TV. This one, people are dug in, and uh, we'll see what happens. And, of course, you'll see it right here on Court TV. Uh, when we